How do you change the thermal paste in your PC? Now, this is gonna go for anybody that has an AIO, and then we'll do an air cooler. They're roughly about the same, but there are some little differences. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off the cooler. Now, there's gonna be four different screws if you have an AIO, and if you have an air cooler, there's gonna be a few different things, and we'll do that in a different video. But we're gonna loosen all four of these screws. All right, so we have the screws loosened, and now we can just do it by hand. But there's a couple things while I'm doing this I wanna go over. If you have a Ryzen 5000 series or below, what can happen when you're doing this is when you take this part off, your back plate on your motherboard can fall into the back of your case. So if you have one of those, definitely pay attention to another video that we'll do on changing that out. Now we're doing the last screw, and this one's already loose. You can see we don't have any suction, but what can happen is if you have one of those old AM4s, what happens is your thermal piece can get stuck and it feels like you need to pull it, but if you pull it straight off, you can pull the CPU with it. That's what I'm saying. But you wanna kinda of rock it like this motion so you can create an air pocket and once it releases, then you can take it off. But you don't wanna pull and use force because the CPU can come with you and then you can bend, break pins, and so on. It honestly looks like they may have recent, nah, it's dried out, okay. Once you get your AIO moved out of the way, you can kind of use these brackets or pull off the cable, and then we can move it onto the side. We're gonna clean off the thermal paste with some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Some people use microfiber cloths and some people use coffee filters. The only issue with microfiber is if you catch it on any of these components, it's strong enough that it can pull the component with it. The good thing about paper towels is they kind of rip, so you don't have to really worry about that. So I just kind of get it in a little square, and there's a reason you do it like a square like this. We get our isopropyl alcohol, just get a nice little bit on there. If you put your finger in like this and you're very accurate, you're not gonna hit any other components. So we'll just go ahead, wipe on down. And this way you don't have to take the CPU out and you're not gonna kind of risk damaging different components. And once you see that you kind of maxed out that little space, then we're gonna go ahead and move it over here, doing our little finger trick and doing the same thing. And don't worry if there's a little extra pace that goes on the bracket, goes anywhere else, you see there's a little bit over here, that's not gonna change anything. You have nothing to worry about. You can leave it if you're not very confident with your PC building and all that stuff, just leave it. It's not worth you trying to get in there, mess something up, take the CPU out. I would recommend just leaving it as is. So we're gonna do our square. And the reason I like the square is because you can just move it, get a clean side, move it and get a clean side. Get our little finger bud. And then we're just kind of doing a circle, cleaning all this stuff off. This one came off quite easy. Clean that guy off, and then you kind of just do it one direction so you can get all the dust off. Now, I personally do an X pattern. It seems to spread the best for a pattern without actually spreading it out. Or you can do this and get a little spatula and then spread it over the entire chip. But that's a lot of big process. You kind of open yourself up to damaging other components when it's inside of a built PC. You can do the P size in the middle, but generally speaking, a circle when it spreads out or a sphere is gonna spread out to another circle and you're gonna miss those little points. What you need the thermal paste to do is kind of stick to the CPU. So once you get it and you want to kind of push it on there. So we're getting there. I'm actually going to use the phone camera. Hopefully I can see decently well. So we're getting, okay, we got a little bit. And then you're going to try to drag it at a 45 degree angle. So it's sticking. And then we slowly press while we slowly move. We don't want it too skinny and we don't want it too fat. And we're just trying to do a diagonal little dude all while doing this and spreading it all the way. And then once you get to the end, I kind of just touch it so we can lay that little string that comes with it back onto the CPU. And there we go. We could have gone a little closer, but it'll spread. We'll be just fine. Let's see if we can do this with the camera. Okay. So this will be just A-OK. -okay. Uh, it was a little thick right here. It's kind of hard when you can't see. I'm just doing this by feel. So there's a couple important things to note when you're doing the AIO. So what we wanna do is have this lie flat altogether. And the reason is if you angle it like this, you're gonna to touch the thermal paste over here and then you're gonna angle it back and then now the thermal paste is going everywhere. And we don't really want that. We want everything to lie flat together. So what you can do is you wanna barely get enough. So you get one of these guys and you barely get enough on there. So you just kinda of put it on there. We're not touching the thermal paste at all yet but we're just trying to get this attached so it doesn't fall. Okay, sorry about that. We get our screw right here and we just get a little bit of a turn. We're just trying to get it on there. We're not tightening anything up yet. Now we're gonna get this guy 
And then lastly, which this can be in the way, and look, these guys move, so you have no problem, so you can just move it out of your way. Make sure you're level. You can do this with your screwdriver or with your thumbs at first. So what I usually do is one like full turn, and then we're gonna skip to the next side down here, one full turn over here, and we're doing it slowly together. So you go here, here, and then we're going up here, one full turn over here, and then one full turn over here. And what we're doing is we're making sure this all comes down together, because if you do one side first, you can actually bend the mount. You can actually bend the mount right here, or you can have the thermal paste and this all not lie flat, and you can have a little gap in there, and you're not gonna get proper cooling, okay? So we're just doing one full turn, one full turn, and honestly, since it's not a real star, you can go here, here, to here, to here, or here, to here, to here, to here. You'll be just fine. Once you're pretty tight, you can go and then do your star pattern with a screwdriver. Now, you can do this, and I'll show you. You don't want to force this, because if you over-tighten, this is a pretty flimsy metal. You just want to get it tight. Like, just, you know, I'm trying to think of, like, a good, a good hefty one, but you're not forcing. There's no real force behind it. The reason is if you over tighten this, this metal bracket will bend. And when it bends, you get air pockets. I promise that happens. I've seen it plenty of times. But when you finish, see how I'm just getting a little turn there? Once you finish, if you did it right, all of these should stop all roughly at the same time. You see that? We got about a quarter to a half turn on all of them and all of them came together. So now we have some great thermal paste. And anytime that you change thermal paste or do anything, Go ahead and run some tests so you can run Furmark, so you can do a CPU load on that. And then you'll go ahead and check your temperatures. You can use Hardware Info 64, it's free download. Hardware Info 64, and then you can look at your CPU temps. Just make sure it's good, maybe you have a readout. But you always want to do that anytime that you change thermal paste or mess with your computer, check your temperatures. And then once we finish with that, we can go ahead and get our little cables. If you had to plug them or unplug them, you can take them down. But that's how you change the thermal paste and then we'll do an air cooler or something like that just so you can get a better idea.